Well, if you don't want to turn loose your money, don't talk to him about buying. Because <laughs> he's going to sell it. Everyone I spoke to before I met Al said, you're not going to believe this man's gift, that he can sell anything to anybody at any time effortlessly. I used to have a saying that he would sell a mosquito a jacket in the summertime. <laughs> Good morning. So my name is Al Black. Uh, I have some oil paintings. I want to know what you all be interested in if it wouldn't take up too much of you all's time. With that pitch, Al Black traveled US-1, selling paintings from his 1962 blue and white Ford Galaxy. He was king of the road for The Highwayman, African-American artist out of Fort Pierce who painted a vanishing Florida landscape anyone could afford. So Al was selling for everybody. Uh, the only paintings he didn't sell was the ones you didn't give him. His commission was 30% per painting. A signature size painting, two by three foot, sold for um, $25 in the 1960s. And he would take his third of that and be happy. And he would give the two thirds to the artist and they'd be delighted. But Al Black being Al Black might charge $50 for a painting and still give the um, artist the two thirds of the $25 and pocket the rest. And hence generally make more than the, the painters would make. But he, but you, you can't fault a person. He was a salesman and he wasn't cheating. So that was his, uh, that was his game. Game, not game, G-I-N-E. I asked him if his friends taught him to paint. He said, no, not at all. They wanted to keep him selling. Made sense. But he said he learned to paint by repairing the paintings that were left in his care for selling. So carrying them around, they would get messed up. The paintings would get scarred. And I had to fix them. And after I learn how to mix everybody's colors because by me being the salesman I'm walking around watching the colors that they mix and I can mix that color and I will fix them and so after I learn how to fix them and the stuff I started to paint myself. I can be down and out, you know, feeling bad that morning. But if I can make it out to the paint where I painted it, everything picks up and just come into me and make me feel real good. Leolando Sentinel had published an article about the high women. And in the article it said that this man who had written it had been following the high women and he'd been following Al Black and that indeed Al Black was his favorite. And his last encounter with him had been in the Port St. Lucie jail. So I called the patient into my office and I had the article laying on my desk and he looked at it and he began telling me about this man that had written this article. And I said to him, I said, are you, Al Black? are you this Al Black? And he said, Doc, if you'll just let me paint, I'll show you. I think I paint uh, two or three paintings uh, in three or four hours Great. in here. I would think you'd want to make it go slow. Then. That's right. Well, <laughs> I had, I was limited in time. Uh, you know, I'd have to have an officer with me, you know, at the time when I was paying, till I got trustable, you know. Was there any time, this may sound somewhat silly, during your 12 years when you actually got to see these places? Were you on any Well, I didn't need to see them anymore. They was in my mind, yeah. A lot of people buy paintings because it reminds them of the place they used to be or how it, how it used to be. The way I feel that if a person see a painting and they like it, there's a meaning to them, you know, there's a meaning to that painting. 
that painting will grow on you. If you buy a painting and you like it a little bit today, three months from now, you'll love that painting. Thank you.